the electrification of the automobile is inevitable. I didn't say that. Neither did my friend here from Nissan. It's Bob Lutz of GM. And in reality, in uh, January 21, 2008, it happened in Israel. We had the first, for the first time, the CEO of Renault and Nissan standing up and saying, we will make electric cars, we'll make them fun to drive, and we'll make them in high volume, enough for the entire country to switch. We had Project Better Place stand up and declare that we will put a network ahead of time of charging infrastructure across the entire country. That network of infrastructure will include 500,000 charge spots that will be put in parking lots, in w at work, at downtown, before the first car shows up. It will include swap stations that enable us to swap batteries as we go through the, uh, the um, uh, freeways. And it will include scheduling software that enables us to charge these cars without needing to bring down the grid every time everybody connects to, to the grid. We also had a policy by government that decided to push this, uh, this switch, this change from oil to oil independence within less than a decade. A president who stood up and said, we will get off oil within this decade in a policy that was put in place to actually make that happen faster than 10 years. The electric car has a secret. Secret is you have to separate between the battery and the car if you want to make consumers adopt it faster. The battery is not part of the cost of the car. The battery is a consumable that is equivalent to crude oil. If you separate between the car and the battery and you put the infrastructure in place to charge, you open a menu of, of sources to generate the electricity, the energy required for that car. The battery as a consumable plus the electricity for the car gets you to a price of six cents per mile. That's cheaper than the price you called absurd right now by the administration. It actually is relatively around the range of about $1.50 a gallon. Um, if you build it in the right way, you build a service company that sits in between almost like a mobile company. Think of Verizon or Sprint for cars. That company can actually provide both the infrastructure and the cars. And as a mobile company, what we sell effectively is miles. That company can also provide rebates for the car. And as, as it happens in Israel and as it happens in other countries, the rebate structure makes the electric car so affordable that we can actually offer these cars for free to the consumer. When you offer free cars with zero emission, with zero oil to consumers, they usually go for that car. The question is, how much do you put, need to put in, in the ground in order to make that infrastructure happen, and how fast can it happen? And the reality of the numbers is that it costs you about $500 per car to put that infrastructure in the ground. In a sense, if we wanted to do this in the US, that's $100 billion of infrastructure, the equivalency of two months of oil imports would get us off the addiction. Two months of oil imports, most of which would actually go as jobs. $80 billion will go as jobs in installing the infrastructure in the ground, jobs we cannot outsource outside this country. How fast can we do this is a question of policy in the country. Denmark, which is another country that adopted this model, had put a policy that sets the price of a car, gasoline-based cars, at 180 percent tax to get off gasoline and a zero-emission car at zero. Hence, you get asked, do you want to buy a gasoline-based car at $60,000 or get an electric car pretty much close to free? And I think that if you choose $60,000, they'd actually like you to leave the country. You failed the IQ test in that case. Every year we wait costs us $500 billion of oil imports and $300 billion of the wrong cars coming onto <laughs> our streets. That's $800 billion is the cost of prolonging the decision of shifting to electricity. And so the question that we have ahead of us right now is would we actually want to shift off cars? Do we want to put that energy to play? $100 billion of infrastructure, $500 billion of generation, solar, wind, wave, would actually get us off oil forever. The cost of one year of oil would get us off oil forever. All government has to do is let business do what it needs to do. Go back 100 years and let us do what Edison and Westinghouse did when they built the electric grid in this country. Cut away the red tape, put in the incentives to actually accelerate this plan, and probably call Detroit again. I think the congresswoman from Michigan, who's not here with us right now, said it correctly. We owe a debt to Detroit. 1942, the president called him up and said, please stop making cars and start making tanks. Maybe it's time the president called Detroit again and said, stop making tanks, please make the right cars. And if we did it, and we put the right investment in place, and we open up for businesses like Project Better Place and others to put this infrastructure in the ground, we can get the American public to drive on electricity and save our country from oil. Thank you.